welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am a writer currently revising my debut women's fiction novel and uh, right now prepping for NaNoWriMo. If you're not familiar, NaNoWriMo is National Novel Writing Month, uh, the month of November where we set out to write the entire first draft of a brand new novel. So since this is my first NaNoWriMo, I wanted to definitely participate in Preptober and put out some videos for other people that are planners like myself, or maybe just interested, maybe you're more of a pantser, but you're interested in the idea of, you know, plotting and so maybe looking for some more tips or resources on those things. Um, but anyway, I just thought it would be, would be fun to kind of document my planning journey uh, throughout the month of October or Preptober. In my last video I shared my Preptober schedule and a lot of resources that I'm using to to plan and sort of how I'm laying out those activities throughout the month and organizing them. Um, so if you haven't watched that video I'll link it down below so you can go catch up on that. And another thing I wanted to say about that video, uh, I got such a great response, so much enthusiasm surrounding that video from all of you. Um, you know, a lot of new subscribers to my channel. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the fact that that you enjoyed that video and that you want to see more uh, of my writing journey. So I really, really appreciate you. And you know, everyone that liked the video or left a comment, thank you so much. I really enjoyed you know, t reading through all of those. And that's one of the things that I love about NaNoWriMo. You know, I participated in Camp NaNoWriMo before and this is my first NaNoWriMo experience and I am loving it. There's just so much enthusiasm surrounding this event. You know, everyone is so excited to kind of see everyone else's journey and pump them up and root for them. But in this video, I, I wanted to do an update on those activities that I mentioned but I also wanted to elaborate on some of the concepts that I touched on um, in that video. This is gonna be the third book that I've outlined and, and planned and prepped for. So I thought it could be fun for me to share, but also helpful maybe for some of you if you're looking for tips and tricks on structuring your novel from the initial concept to something that's a little bit more fully fleshed out that's gonna really help you get a solid outline together for drafting. Okay, so in my last video, I mentioned that this time around, I really wanted to focus on um, a pitch and a synopsis first before I really get into brainstorming scenes or going into the beats. So the way that I go about this is I like to start with a log line and the log line is really um, that one sentence that's very, very simple. Um, and I think that that is really, at least for me, what helps me kind of get to what is my, you know, when you're, when you're going further into the beats, what is my a story? What is my main primary plot? Because I think a lot of times, you know, again, this might just be for me, but I'm sure other people can relate, that our stories seem so complex that we have so much going on, which is great, you know, in terms of like conflict and stakes and all that stuff, but you still have to know what your primary plot is to identify that main plot so that as I'm going through and writing my story, if I feel like a subplot starts to take over, I can identify that before while it's happening or, you know, circumvent that. So, so after I develop the log line, I start developing that into more of a blurb. So it's kind of hard to verbalize my thoughts on blurbs, but I have notice that there seems to be a little bit more of a recipe that you can use for blurbs. Um, and I think that that would be really interesting to talk about later on my channel, maybe do a, a dedicated video talking about blurbs um, and do maybe sort of like a workshop video or something like that. So let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. So that's how I started week one of Preptober is with the logline and the blurb. And then once I had those, I started to develop my synopsis. And like I said in my last video, I was using um, Susan Dennard's synopsis template. Um, and what I found was that about halfway into the synopsis, it started triggering some questions for me as far as the characters' backstories. And so it wasn't that I it wasn't that I felt like the synopsis should come later. I still 
I still feel like doing it in this order is good because those questions that occurred to me might not have occurred to me if I hadn't started the template at the point in which I did. These exercises were really valuable to get me to a point where I knew what I needed to know about my characters and about, you know, everything that led them up to the point in time where the story, where the story is set. Okay, so I started on that synopsis. I took a break to kind of brainstorm um, some backstory ideas for my characters, some ideas for motivation, you know, what um, what is motivating them in life? What, um, you know, emotional wounds or bruises do they have um, that influences how they react to, to things that happen throughout the story, you know? So, uh, yeah, like I mentioned, um, the idea thesaurus was helpful for that. And just taking some time to ask myself what if questions, you know, like, you know, just, just throw random things out there and just go with it. Take some sheets of paper and just, just start free writing. Um, if he was like this or if this happened in his past, how would that have influenced him throughout his life or her, you know? Another thing um, that you might think about doing is you know, take movie examples. There was, um, I'm always looking at writing books. I am such a writing book freak. But there was some other book, I think it was called uh, Steel, Steel Like a, ah, dang it. It was called Steel Like a Writer, I think. But anyway, I think it, I think it was that book that was talking about how really nothing is new you're always like stealing ideas from everywhere and it, you really it's up to you to make it your own i think that it's helpful to think about um, some other movie or book that or whatever that's similar to yours and how do they do it you know like what are what are some of the motivations or the backstories that from those characters um, that you can implement into your own and shift them and change them to your own devices uh, to make it work for your story. So the plot structure that I'm using is the Save the Cat uh, Writes a Novel Beat Sheet. But if you haven't ever used the Beat Sheet from the Save the Cat Writes a Novel book, I highly recommend it. It's really straightforward and easy to use in my opinion. I found it that way. Um, and I just feel like it's really going to keep you on track to make sure that you have all of the elements in your story that you need um, to make sure that your character has enough agency and um, just that you're really tying up all of the loose ends of your A story and your B story um, and making sure that those converge where they're where they're meant to. And I just, I find it very easy to use. And after having the beats broken out and I know exactly what I want to establish for each of the beats, I'm going to be brainstorming scenes. So I wanted to share a strategy that I'm going to be using to really visualize all the scenes and make sure that I have enough. So here's the general idea. Sorry that my board is kind of messy. I need to clean it. But um, I just wanted a place where I could kind of organize all this stuff. So I just uh, wrote each beat from the beat sheet down on its own separate post-it. And um, yeah, I'm going from left to right and kind of top to bottom. Anyway, um, and I tried to give myself some more space for certain beats that need more scenes. But I'm just thinking that this will uh, help me out. I'm going to use other post-its to put directly beneath and each um, additional post-it will represent a scene and so some of the beats that are quicker might need just you know one scene and so that whole beat will be a scene but some of the other beats like fun and games or um, you know B story midpoint some of these other ones are definitely going to be more than one scene so I want to be able to kind of see all those things and see if I need to fill in any additional scenes and do some more brainstorming. So I'm really thinking that the strategy is going to be really helpful for me, you know, to visualize and see everything laid out. And uh, once I have all those scenes established, I'm going to start typing them up into my outline. So the outline is going to be my roadmap as I'm drafting so that every day when I sit down to write, I know exactly what I'm going to be writing. I know it's different for everyone. Some people like not knowing. Um, again, plotter versus pantser. I'm more of a plotter, so for me personally, I like to know what I'm going to be writing. That way I can really maximize my time and be really efficient. Okay, so an update for where I am right now with my Preptober journey. Um, it has been a little bit fragmented. Uh, the, I, I haven't had quite as many opportunities to be 
planning um, as I had hoped. I did get a chance to catch up. My husband and I went camping. We had a five hour road trip and so I got a chance to catch up on everything in the car so that was really great. I did a lot of character uh, backstory stuff. I'm still at this point trying to figure out uh, my character's names. Um, I have an idea, but I just want to make sure that I'm in love with the names since, you know, that's, I'll be using them a lot and everything. I am halfway through the No Plot, No Problem book that I told you all about, and I'm really enjoying it so far. It is very different from other books that I have on writing, since this one talks specifically about, uh, writing for NaNoWriMo, and it's more about, like, mental shifts and things like that and practical things that you can do um, to kind of create more space in the month, you know, for writing and also how to kind of communicate what you're doing to, you know, friends and family. I feel like it's, it's, it's somewhat geared towards people that are writing their very first novel and they're wanting to do NaNoWriMo as sort of um, a life experience or something like that. But, um, but either way, I mean, there are a lot of things in it that I find as someone who has, has been writing for a long time, um, I can relate to, too. So anyway, I've been enjoying that book, not quite finished yet. Um, I haven't got a, a chance to start the other nonfiction book that I was telling you all about, uh, that is going to be research for, you know, for the novel that I'm writing. Uh, but I'm going to try and start on that soon because I do want to finish that by the end of the month. So yeah, that's where I am at this point in the month. The last couple of weeks this month I'm going to be using to finish, uh, you know, my character development, any last little things that I need to know about them, re any research that I need to do, fleshing out those scenes, um, and, and getting my outline together. So those are all of the ways that I'm structuring my novel from concept all the way to a finished outline so that I'm ready to draft. Thank you so much for watching, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe before you leave, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!